Sky News. Uh, front page of the paper is coming your way after we say hello, good morning to Charlotte, and she's got the rest of the news. Thanks, Eamon. Good morning. A criminal investigation has begun into the deaths of three young children at a flat in Edinburgh. Their bodies were discovered following a blast at the block yesterday afternoon. Jane Chilton reports from Edinburgh. This incident is... Well, what do you think? Um, I'm sure it was absolutely true. Well, you never know, but let us know if you've seen a UFO. It would be quite interesting to hear people's stories of... Close encounters. The truth is out there. Remember that. Uh, front page of the papers this morning. Charlotte, thank you. Daily Mail claiming that the farmer oh, is. Hello there. Very good morning to you. Sky News Sunrise on a Thursday morning with me, Eamon Holmes. This is Mr. James Whale. He's got his views on the newspapers coming up very shortly. Leading the news this morning, Naomi Campbell and the war crimes trial. Right, James Whale coming your way with his views of what's in the newspapers. I have to share it with a rundown of what else is happening. Eamon, thank you. A criminal investigation has begun into the deaths of three young children at a flat in Edinburgh. Their bodies were discovered following a blast at the block of... Here comes uh, James Well with what's in the papers. Very good to see you, James. Uh, Drive Time, LBC. And uh, we start with a very uh, serious and depressing story in The Times, and it's uh, execution, death by stolen. Yeah, you would think we were back in the Middle Ages, wouldn't you? Or back into biblical times 2,000 years ago instead of the 21st century. Um, th this is a really worrying story. I, I worked for an Iranian TV company for a while, and Iranians are charming people, really nice people. And the fact they have to live under the tyranny of this religious bigotry, I think, is very sad. Uh, an Iranian lawyer who's been defending a woman sentenced to death by stoning for alleged adultery has had to flee to Turkey, uh, where he's been arrested and he's uh, applied for asylum. Uh, back in Tehran, uh, the woman he's, um, he's actually uh, uh, looking after is being held in solitary confinement in an infamous prison over there. And just, you know, she, she's uh, decided to go off with another guy or whatever it is. Um, and for that, she is likely to be stoned to death. That is appalling in this day and age, isn't it? Absolutely appalling. This story appears in most of the papers uh, with a picture, not of that, a picture of uh, Amadana Dinajad, or Amadina mm. Jacket, as I prefer to call him, uh, who was uh, attacked yesterday. Not that I wish ill on anybody, but unfortunately they didn't get him. We move to the Daily Express and uh, Peter Sutcliffe, the yeah. Yorkshire Ripper. It's all good news this week uh, yeah. on my paper review. It'll make you really happy about everything. Here we are. 500,000, half a million pounds you and I are going to fork out for Peter Sutcliffe or Peter Coonan, as he now likes to be called, changed his name, uh, in yet another appeal uh, to be allowed out of prison. This is a man who terrorised Yorkshire uh, he killed 13 women and he is in prison for the best rest of his life. And he's going to stay there. Nobody wants this moron out of prison. And the sooner he realises it, the better. What is annoying me today is the fact that he's being allowed uh, to appeal again. He's just had an appeal turned down. He's being allowed to appeal again. And you and I, guys, mm. we're going to pay for it. But doctors say that he suffers from a chronic, treatable mental illness for which he has been willing to accept appropriate treatment uh, which um, he has contained and he's contained his condition for many years. Very nice of him, isn't it? Very good, and I'm sure they're probably right, but that doesn't get away from the fact that this illness was so bad that yeah. he actually killed 13 women. I think for that reason, he never comes out of prison. Yeah, so, so the main insult is that it's even being considered. Yeah, and that I mean, this money are, is... you know, ordinary people in this country cannot get legal aid. You have to be really very wealthy or very poor to mm. get legal aid. Most people can't get any sort of access yeah. to a lawyer. Uh, yet this man, who's committed one of the most heinous crimes in our time, can. It's a problem. Yeah. Now, uh, this is something that's going to get uh, both of you and a lot of people watching really annoyed. Uh, well, a little pop yeah. uh, we've got here and a yeah. little thug yeah, look at this kicked story. it for 20 minutes. Yeah. You, what would you do to him, Charlotte? I can't really repeat what I do to him. Come on, actually, Charlotte, to be honest, let James, because this story makes me so angry. Yeah. Okay. Well, I've got uh, you know th this guy, Simeon Major, and his family. His family must take responsibility for breeding a little scumbag like this. Uh, this kid, uh, he's 19, um, in Bedfordshire, 
needs to be locked up for some considerable time. Now, I bet you that he won't go to prison. But he was trying to get his dog to bite a pal. The yep. dog wouldn't yep. do it. And to make the dog do it, he kicked the living daylights out Absolutely. of it, Absolutely. Now, he's been banned from keeping a dog for 10 years, which I don't suppose people like that actually even bother to He's worry also about. a dad of one at 19. Yeah. And how how can you allow people like this to start having children? This is disgusting. This, this sort of person. And look at his picture again. You know, make sure you get a good look at this guy's picture in the paper and what he did. He needs to go inside and he needs to be kept there until he begs to come out. And if this doesn't happen, then there really is no justice. And, and I'm beginning to think there is no justice. No, well, that. there are so many things wrong about the fact that, you know, he hasn't been given, a lot of people would say, sufficient punishment for what he's done. And apparently he's just given this dog to a friend. So yeah. in all likelihood, he's still got access yeah. to this dog. So there just aren't the means to actually, you know, punish someone who's done things like that. Would you like, all of you, would you like to know what punishment he received? Oh, you no. know. Not very much. Eight weeks detention. Well, they Eight should make him work detention. with animals. They, they should. Yeah. And uh, we want to finish on a, a story in the Daily Telegraph, and that is um, men do more work. <laughs> where, where do they do this work? In? Oh, dear. Well, <laughs> work no, hang on, well. Charlotte. No, no, Charlotte, please. You're making up because the headlines is... now, are you? No, no, no. I only, uh, I only read what is writ. And uh, this is front page of the Telegraph, so this is really true, isn't it? I mean, that's a paper that uh, tells it like it is. Can I just um, make that point there, Yossi? Charlotte, read that headline for us. You better just explain... No, no, Charlotte, what... read the headline for us. According to the Daily Telegraph today, men do more work. There must be some... No, did you, no that's fine, Charlotte, that. that's fine. Did you hear that, Eamon? I heard Charlotte that. There must be a but. Do... Does, the, does the next paragraph begin no, with but? No, no, it says, <laughs> Fathers, it seems, have been unfairly labelled as shirkers. Eamon and I know this to be true. A study has found out that they do more marginally, and I don't think that word is right, but we're, anyway, marginally more work than their partners <laughs> when employment and domestic chores are combined. Mm. We are the leaders. So, so we are more productive over yes. the course of a day, yeah, Charlotte, yeah, yeah, really, yeah. is what... We do more. And if, if, if we decide to do a bit of cleaning, vacuuming, yes. you know, cleaning the toilets, as I know Eamon doesn't like a dirty toilet, he gets in there, scrubs the floor, we do it better. I would like to see who carried out this research. I don't believe the statistics, I'm afraid. That's in fact, are there any statistics? Probably well, not. Uh, it's in the Telegraph. You can't man. disbelieve it's probably this. things like, you know, men do the, the first task of the day and, and the last task of the day, probably, you know, locking up the house or I leaving out the I tell you what it is, it's because or... men talk about it more. Women just get on and do it. And obviously the men in this survey have gone, I've done this today, I've done that today. This is rubbish. And they think that that's Charlotte, I'm not defending no, it. It's no, just fact. Rubbish. It's from this the London fact. School of Economics. It's fact. This is we are. And I think your viewers will disagree. realize that this is a fact they can email you and say right, we'll guys okay. have been sadly <laughs> sadly berated for a long time now that they okay. don't do enough uh, news at sky.com uh, you can make your case or state your situation your belief on this that's sky charlotte at him and holmes that was mr james will he's back in an hour's time doing even more work <laughs> cold water uh, matter does it i'm just discussing the merits <laughs> of cold what is it cold washing powder what is it Washing paddy, you can use in cold water. Ah, right, right. Very but would nice. environmentally. Yeah. But would, so, so that would appeal cold. to you guys? Clearly, right? a man that doesn't do much washing. Well, yeah. I have no idea. <laughs> yeah. works or no? no idea. No, no. <laughs> well, I think the idea is at a lower temperature. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't use as degrees. much electricity. So. But, that begins to dispel that rumour that, uh, men, that do study. More work. men do more work. Do you actually work. know where your no washing machine work. is? I know where it is. <laughs> I, but they, 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 they used to have things like balls that you put in washing machines, and now they have little, like, half caps, and it completely confused me recently <laughs> when, when I put Jack's um, track shoes in there and then Ruth didn't speak to me for a week. Yeah, it's probably because so. you put it in the dishwasher. <laughs> they, they sort of disintegrate. Yeah, it could have been. Could have been. Sports-wise, what have you got? Uh, right, well, it's being reported in this morning's newspapers that China is so, behind... Weather-wise, what have you got, Lucy? A little bit of everything today, a bit of sunshine, a bit of clouds, some showers. Uh, it's a mixed bag. <laughs> Uh, let's get a rundown on what else is happening with breaking news. Here's Charlotte. Thanks, Eamon. Yes, we've got breaking news from the city and Barclays have just announced their pre-tax profits. It's £3.95 billion in the first six months of this year. They're the latest bank to tell us this week how much money they have made this year. They had been expecting it around £3 billion, which would have been up more than 20% on last year's results. So come in even better than expected, £3.95 billion uh, last year in the first six months of the year they made 2.4 billion and it comes off the back of uh, Lloyd's of course they are reminds me of me very <laughs> very shy and likes to sleep lots there we go uh, front pages of the papers the Daily Mail first of all
But it is uh, Mr. James Whale, and he's already signing off about what's in the newspapers. That will wake you up, save you going out and buying them. James delivering those in just over five minutes' time. Good to see you, James. Uh, leading the news this morning, Naomi James with the papers after Charlotte with a rundown of what else is happening. Thanks, Eamon. We start with some breaking news, actually, that the three children who died at a flat in Edinburgh have been named. They were eight-year-old twins who were non-identical, Austin and Luca Riggi, and also five...